In terms of the crisis in the past few years, two issues uh, came to the fore. The lack of corporate governance on boards and uh, the attitude to risk, whether, uh, let's say, for example, each boss, it was excessive risk or with RBS, it was a lack of corporate governance uh, aspect. Uh, and quite a bit of evidence that we took in the former Treasury Committee indicated that it was very hard to measure risk. In fact, Professor Charles Goodhart, who was here on Monday, uh, said it was almost impossible to measure risk. And Professor John Key, who was also here, said he'd been teaching it for 25 years at Oxford, but he threw his lecture notes into the bin just before he came to the committee. How do we ensure that we make risk more transparent for companies and the regulator himself, that yes. they know they're measuring uh, risk? <coughs> I, I agree with, uh, I'm very sympathetic to the thrust of that question and would say a few things in response. First, and to repeat an earlier point, the supposed risk weights um, did no such thing. As, as leverage was rising from the 20s through the 30s through the 40s, the average risk weight in almost <coughs> a perfect mirror image uh, was, was declining. We see it again and in a very different context with um, Eurozone sovereign debt. I mean, the, um, uh, the risk weights are not properly reflecting the, the risk. Perfectly plain for everyone to see. Part of the Basel III process is to improve the risk weights, and any improvement is to be welcomed, though it's certainly not improvement to a state of perfection. One of our recommendations that I've not yet mentioned this morning is on aggregate leverage, that is um, the ratio of balance sheet to equity capital unweighted for risk. And in the Basel III proposals, uh, a leverage um, ratio of 3% or a factor of 33, in other words, is, is part of the agreement. We think it's very important to have a leverage backstop uh, of that kind precisely because of the difficulties of uh, risk weighting. And we believe that for the um, large ring fence banks, <coughs> which on our recommendations have a higher than Basel III capital requirement, one should move the leverage backstop ratio pro rata. I find it a bit curious in the Basel process that the globally systemically important banks in the pro proposals that I've seen don't have a tightening of that leverage ratio in line with the proposed higher capital requirements uh, on them. So there's that, that leverage point. I see that leverage backstop um, in part as it, normally, and if risk weights are doing their job, I doubt that would be a binding constraint on institutions. If that does start to be a binding constraint, then I would worry, if I were a regulator, about whether the risk weights are doing their job or not. So I think it can be informative uh, about uh, the very point that you make. Final response would be that the problems you cite are even worse when the providers of finance to banks are not themselves um, bearing the downside risks. When you get them into a place where they are bearing the downside risks, they have much, much greater incentives to monitor these things themselves. Yeah. <clears throat> in a report that just came out at the last general election, the Future Banking Commission, yeah. in which uh, David Davis was on, Vince Cable, myself, and, and indeed Claire Spottiswood, yeah. uh, we focused on the issue of culture and ethics, you know, culture and behaviour, yes. and ethics uh, resolving conflicts of interest. Is that an issue that should be taken on the agenda, because I know there wasn't much reference to it in your report, but should it be a permanent feature of the agenda going forward? It, it's certainly a very important set of issues. It seems to me quite difficult to regulate directly. However, a number of indirect influences can be brought to bear, and we would say that the ring-fenced architecture, the governance arrangements that go with that, the director's duties, the uh, point just mentioned about providers of finance and risk um, should all be helped in this regard. Another point which has not yet been mentioned explicitly, but why not, is that the whole question of remuneration and the very understandable public anger around that, I believe has been particularly acute in a context where the taxpayers, the public finances have been bearing uh, that risk. 
So while getting the risk away from the public finances would not um, solve all remuneration problems, I think it would be a pretty important step uh, towards addressing them, along with other measures and other regulations which are directly bearing on that.